two, one, and here we go. There is no music today because our music box is broken, but here we are. Welcome to TT TV. Uh, hi there. My name is Royce, and uh, I am in Traverse City, Michigan. Welcome to TT TV. And today is a special show because it's going to be a surprise for everybody because today is, where is Dolly today? You know, there's a, you know, the book, Where's Waldo? Well, Dolly's kind of like Waldo a little bit in that um, she's always somewhere else. We've seen her in different parts of the world. And today, we are wondering where she's at. So what we're gonna do is bring Tali up. We have her on the side and I'm not exactly sure what you would call where she's at, but she's gonna tell us. And so here's the big surprise, the big reveal. I'm bringing Tali up. Good morning, Tali. Good late afternoon. Oh, good late afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Well, the question that everybody's asking today of is course. where is Tali today? Where is Tali? Can you recognize this view behind me? Well, there is a certain coloration of the sky and the buildings that's familiar to me. And wow, what a beautiful view! This is the view in here in Tel Aviv. Hey, wow. It's hot summer of Tel Aviv. It's hot there, I bet, isn't it? It is hot. Uh, or up here, it's wonderful. Yeah, this it's is like you're in the, in the shade of the trees on the balcony. Down the street. This is hot and humid, and you sweating. Oh, that's like, good for you. Nope. It's cleansing. Yes, this is the. There we go. Perfect. Oh, that's great. This is my face. That In my your, face. That is your face in Tel Aviv. Shalom, shalom. Shalom from Tel Aviv. Wow. Well, that's great. And so um, glad that we could hook up on this time. I know your yeah. your time is short because I have something family Tali's stuff. Always, always got. Uh, People to see, things to do, running around. Like That's great. Everyone else. Like everyone else. But you know what? We're lucky to have you here today. So we're happy about that. Together, we can say now that we know where Tali is, she's in Tel Aviv. Let's change this to um, clearly. So, what's happening in Tel Aviv? Is there any? Uh, is there anything particularly creative that's uh, going on there that you've seen so Every far? Every corner of the street here is creative. Everywhere is a, some exhibition or something to see. I didn't have a chance yet to see everything or ev even not much because I'm tight. I have a tight schedule with my own family stuff, but it will come. I'm sure I will have time. From right now, as I'm leaving, I'm going towards some place that I might see some art. I, I will report about that. Yeah, I know there's lots of street art and that in Tel Aviv for everything from graffiti to like uh, sculptures and that sort of thing. So uh, you should uh, take some pictures and send oh, them yeah. and we will post them because it's a it's an exciting town. Uh, right. Let's see, there's some, uh, there's some news that we can talk about while we're here. Isn't there? There's always something. Here's something that just was released today. Pantone has released a new color. I think officially it's called Rain, but it, it's been given the uh, the love symbol by the artist formerly known as Prince. But as we know, Prince is um, was the purple guy. You know, not everybody has a color assigned to them, but uh, Doug on it, um, Prince. Yeah, Prince certainly okay. did. And so he's got his official color now, purple. There's an official purple. So you can look that up, use it in your design or whatever, but uh, kind of cool to know. It's a beautiful color. It is a beautiful color. I wonder what my color would be. I guess it would have to be 
red, since that's my initials. Right. You knew my initials spelled red, right? Sure. So I could be red. Okay, that's good news. Uh, we want to thank, hey, you're in Tel Aviv. You're in Israel. It's the land of the, the, the inventors of Be Live. And so we should thank Be Live TV. And you can say to Daraba to them. To so Daraba and Be Live, <laughs> which are not far away from here where I'm sitting. Yeah. In the center of Tel Aviv. Ah, so that's great. So we want to thank them because this technology that they've uh, provided is like really, really, really cool. Other news, it's not very long now before uh, Tali and I will be like uh, flying together. And uh, because we have some art retreat coming up here in Olds, but something that we're going to do beforehand, I wanted to mention this because it's... Uh, it has to do with our retreats. And uh, last March and April, we were in the south of France and we did a Van Gogh after Van Gogh retreat. And for 2018, we have a few more, right? We have two more of those planned. Very exciting, yes. It's very exciting. And there's something that uh, we're going to go research. Uh, one of the things that Tali and I try and do when we get together is pile on as many projects as we can so that, it, you know, airfare, uh, although it's kind of cheap these days uh, for flying to Europe, it's not too bad. Um, uh, there's, it's still an expense. And so we try and like jam up as much stuff as we can with it. And so we're going to do some research in the French city of Auvergne, where it's the city where Van Gogh died and is buried. And so I wanted to show you, put some pictures up here because these are from uh, a website. These pictures actually, the photos are actually taken by Rudy Scholes, but there's some of the things that we're going to go see. This is the, the garden of Dr. Gachet, who uh, attended to, to Van Gogh, and he painted in his garden uh, many times while he was living in Auvergne. Auvergne, of course, was the place he went directly after he was in San Rami. And so what we want to do, Tali and I, is to include as a kind of a special add-on to the second retreat that we have in Arles is to go to Auvergne and visit some of these places and paint from there. So we're going to go to... So pencil it up. Pencil it year. in, yes. May 2018. I'm going to put this as... In the, in the city garden, he painted there a couple places. Oh, of course, there's the town hall. Uh, I'm just really excited to see some of these things. When we were in Arles and San Romé, it just was like so chilling uh, in a good way to be in these places where Vincent painted. And uh, I'm excited to go to this new place because we've, Tali and I have also been to Noonan. Uh, where he went and lived with his his parents, and that and that was great. This is the and we're gonna we'll go here check this out. This is the cafe where he stayed and the house where he lived and the house where he died. Uh, just a little like uh, news flash as to what Tali and I are kind of uh, got planned here in the next couple of weeks. Just in case you get used to seeing us in our individual studios in either the Netherlands or Michigan, there's gonna be a couple of weeks here where we're gonna be. So I God. want to just say, say that next time I will see, I think next time we will do that, it's one, it will be when we are together in the Netherlands because I will be flying. When, when will you be, what will you be doing next Tuesday? Tuesday the 21st. Are you oh, still in Tel Aviv? The 21st. Well, I'm seven thinking, more days, 22 maybe. Yeah, yes, uh, the 20. And I will be back here in in because I'm going to the north and back and forth. So I will oh, be we don't, again, somewhere. Again, hey, we can do a sequel show, Tali, next week because we still don't know where you'll be. The no, Where I'm Is Tali show yeah. number two. We'll but, do that next right? week too. Yes, because we will. you could be anywhere. I will, and I will be anywhere. That's in for sure. Everywhere. Somewhere. Okay, so yeah, next week we'll do a kind of a version of this again, and hopefully yes. we can catch you somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but the week after that, well, I will I will pass over the show for you right now, uh, as I know you have uh, great plans there and set well, up a new studio, 
and I'm going. Yeah, um, well, we'll miss having you here today because you know you're. It's you're been wonderful crazy. being here, <laughs> and this opportunity on air and air. Fabulous. So yeah. next week, where's Tali again? In two weeks, Tali and Royce will be. And then we'll do it from your studio. Some... From your studio, Nine. I think. In the Netherlands, we'll do it together. Awesome. Okay, Tali, yes. have a great day. Uh, and we'll see you later. You too. Good luck. Okay. Tuda. Okay. Good throat. Good throat. Okay. Bye. Okay. So here we are, and I'm trying to fix my background because there we go. That's better. Okay. I'm solo here now. I don't know if I've ever done this for any length of time. I'm going to do it now. So actually, there's Tali. She just left the uh, FaceTime. So it's just me. And so I have a couple things I want to run over today. We just talked about uh, Vincent van Gogh. Uh, I want to point out this book. If you want a great read, check out this book, Van Gogh, The Life. Here, I'll give you, show you the spine. It's upside down, isn't it? Okay, there we go. See that? Check out this book and get it if you want a comprehensive history it's fantastic it's uh as you can see i've done lots of uh research and marking of places there's some great images and some great stories if you if you read his letters and this book you will know more than most people and it's it's he was a fascinating guy anyway looking forward to going back to to france to to check that out. I just wanted, I had the book here. I wanted to point that out. I'm trying to, so I'm going to do a little demo here in a little bit, but first I wanted to mention something else that we're going to do just because it's really fun and important to, to what we do at the artist table. Uh, first of all, there's uh, still time to see the selfie show and to go there and vote in the people's choice. Uh, so if you just go to our website, uh, which is uh, artisttableonline.com, you can go there and go to exhibition and uh, you can see the selfie show is the current show. That's what's up right now. It'll be up for uh, three or four more days because our next show coming up, we're just waiting for the uh, results to come back from the juror. Uh, it's going to be another very interesting show, the sketchbook exhibition, because I don't know, sketchbooks are so great. They really, um, uh, or something as artists are like really an intimate sort of part of our process. It's exciting to have seen all the artwork that's been submitted for the sketchbook exhibition because some of it's very personal sort of journaly sort of things as well as preliminary work for sculpture. And it's going to be really cool to see. I really love uh, I'm giving you, a, it's not really a spoiler alert, but there's, there's some, uh, the presentation of the the photographs are, are the artwork are a little bit different. I mean, so a lot of people like chose to include that it's in a book, and so sometimes we see the spiral binding or we see a little shadow from the other page because these uh, a lot of times uh, these these artworks are contained in in the book. They're absolutely contained in the book. Some of them have been taken out, but so this show probably has more work that is not for sale just because it's than any other show we've had just because it, it belongs in the book and the artists are kind of holding on to them. It means a lot to them. And so uh, after the selfie show, this the sketchbook show will go up online. And following that, then we'll uh, put out our call for our next exhibition, which is going to be called Anything Goes. And it's it really is going to be Anything Goes. It's all, all uh, open themed, all media. Feel free to uh, submit sculpture or uh, video or paintings or drawings or collage, photographs, you name it. Anything goes, any, any theme, any topic, any subject, any medium, any genre, you know, it, even if uh, the video is just a video or the video might be a dance performance or something, uh, anything goes. So we love to see what people come up with. That's kind of another part of the fun thing about what we do here at the artist table is just seeing how people interpret uh, these themes of our shows. And we've been doing 
these for some time now. I think any the sketchbook will be like their 27th show or something. So be a part of it. <clears throat> All right. Another thing that I wanted to talk about before we get too far into this and I start my little demo, if you want to call it a demo, the retreats. As I, as I mentioned when Tali was online, actually, I think it's a, I just got the ticket. I think it's the 28th. So the 29th of August, I will be in the Netherlands and we will do another broadcast there uh, before we go to Auvergne in France, just north of Paris, and uh, to do our little researchy business there. And then we have a little painting excursion that we're going to go do in the Mauvon which would be great because uh, actually Tali and I have uh, an exhibition that's coming up. This is more on a personal note that, that we have an exhibition coming up in October. Actually, just talked to the, uh, the curator today. It's going to be at the, the, the Grand Traverse Distillery in Traverse City, Michigan. It's uh, the art mixer part of the Mentor series. It's going to be uh, October 6th through November 13th. We'll have a, a reception on the 20th of October from 6 to 8. And so stay tuned for more information on that. But anyway, but the name of the show is going to be Here and There, and it's going to be a collection of uh, paintings that Tale and I have done uh, both here and there, both in the U.S. and in Europe. And so there'll be stuff from uh, the Netherlands and France and probably some from Israel and uh, some from the U.S. So that's going to be exciting. Uh, actually, we kind of like the idea of the show. All the work is going to be the same size and it's all going to be framed and matted exactly the same, except that uh, I'm going to be working in gouache. But the work that I'm going to present is all gouache on paper and Tali's is all oil pastel. So it's going to be fun to see. Some of the work will be the same, the same scenes and just like different, different artists, different techniques. That'd be kind of exciting. Anyway, so that's coming up before our first retreat. We're going to go there and actually spend the better part of a week in France uh, creating some new work. So I'm kind of excited about that. Then following that is our next retreat that's coming up and that's in Olst in the Netherlands. And it's just a great time. Uh, here's some pictures of some of the grounds and some of the, the people that we've met. There's Tali with all the women that were at that last show last year. And, uh, but the gardens are beautiful and so much to paint, just like within three steps of the house, there's so much to, to see and to paint beyond what you see here is, uh, some, some uh, Dutch farm fields and there's a pond just beyond those trees that you would think you were in Monet's garden with lily, lily pads, but it's a place that we can give you all the freedom that you want to just like wander around and paint your to your heart's content. And so we have a bunch of pictures here of uh, artists working. It's a beautiful place. I can't wait to, to be there. We also have added on this last season uh, dry point etching workshop. And so uh, we have a press that we will have with us there. And so we'll be doing some dry point etching. And of course, sitting around the table, sharing food, sharing drink, sharing stories is really great. And so we're looking forward to that. And then let me mention real quick that following that, you know, Tali and I really try and um, we could pack as much in as possible out of uh, our work and our life. And so we're constantly working and we're constantly trying to uh, work out opportunities to bring artists together. When we are done in Olds, what we're going to do is hop on a plane, actually two planes. Our itineraries got changed. It's really hard to like schedule flights from uh, different origins to end up in the same place at the same time. But we did a pretty good job. Uh, but flying back, I think Tali goes through Stockholm or something, and I go through Reykjavik. So we're going to kind of have a little uh, race back to Chicago. 
Anyway, we're coming back, and the first thing we're going to do is get ready for that show and get all of our work framed up because we should have it done by then, framed up for that show in Trevor City that will open on the 6th of uh, October. Uh, directly following that, we are going to have a treat that we have never had before. We've done lots of things with figure drawing in the past, but we are doing a figure drawing retreat. And so it's going to be a long weekend of working from the figure, both in the studio and out. Here's a picture of a session that uh, we did just behind my studio here. So it's going to be based out of my studio. Let's see, there's a picture of the interior. We bring the model in. We're going to be working in the morning in the studio in uh, the afternoon. Weather permitting, we are going to work outside we'll have the model in nature and it's great if the weather's not permitting we're we have some other places lined up that we'll take the model that won't be just here in the in the studio situation so that's going to be really exciting that's from the, the september 28th to october 1st and so if you have any questions or if you want more information you can always email us at uh, info at artisttableonline.com or you can just go to artisttableonline.com and click on the retreat link. I'm really looking forward to the opportunity of working so intensely from the figure. If you're into figure drawing, which uh, many people are, you know, it's kind of one of those things that uh, lots of artists love and it's just not like really always feasible to do as a solo artist to, to be able to afford to bring a model in or sometimes it's a little bit awkward. Those of us that have the opportunity to really appreciate it. And so one thing I hear constantly, well, the one thing I loved about art school was figure drawing. And the uh, one thing that I haven't done since art school is figure drawing. So it's always cool to, to have those opportunities to to meet with people and to and to give them this opportunity. So uh, some great models are gonna be there. And so if you're into figure drawing, this is the time that you can come and just like give everything up and work from the figure day and night. In the evening, we're gonna do long poses. It's gonna be, be fun. Maybe, I, I, actually we're kind of planning on doing one long pose for the, for three of those four days, the three nights, because the last night, the last night we're going to have a reception here in my studio, uh, invite the public and show them what we've uh, been doing. So that's a, you know, think about Traverse City. Uh, it's a beautiful place anyway, but it'll be a great place to work from the model. And directly after that, uh, we're going to be on Beaver Island again. And Beaver Island is a special place. We were there last year. We're going to be there again. There's beaches and there's, uh, it's the largest island out here in uh, Lake Michigan. But this is where we're going to stay at the convent where it's right. It's, there won't be any snow, but this is the view from there. It's just absolutely fabulous. Every morning sun rises that will be worth getting up for. And uh, so, and great beaches. Uh, lighthouses, you name it. So if you want a, uh, a great plein air experience this fall, join us on Beaver Island from the 7th to the 14th of October. I am going to do a little uh, demonstration here uh, today. Just I, I'll do a quick little thing and I want to show a painting that I was working on yesterday and try and fix part of it or try and finish it up. This kind of a new, never before done thing, like actually finish an actual painting on the air. Hmm. Hey, if you want to see, uh, connect with us on different, different platforms, uh, the artist table has always got something on Instagram. You can find us at artist table, oddly enough, on Instagram or on Twitter, artist table. How about that? Uh, or if you look for Tali or me on either one of those two, you can find our own personal pages. So, And then, of course, we have a, a, a Facebook group. A lot of you maybe know about it already. It's called Around the Artist Table. If you're into Facebook groups, it's a, it's a good form that's just completely open. You feel free to share your artwork there, uh, ask us questions, or find out what we're doing because we're always posting calls for art and things there as well. So, And as well... 
if you have an opening that you're in, an opening of one of your shows, uh, exhibitions, let us know. We'll we'll post it on around the artist table. We'll post. We we can put it out through a lot of our social media thing as well as announce it here. We'd love to actually bring you on online here if you wanted to just come online and tell us. Look at that. Let's see if I can set this up without it falling over. It's a little homemade. Okay. Can you see that? I'm going to take this off. Here we go. It's going to be a little sideways. I have a feeling I'm going to be working sideways for you. I'm going to be working in gouache today, which is uh, opaque watercolor. I'd show you this palette, but it's a little embarrassing. I'll show it to you. It's just like I, I'm a messy palette person, and you're just going to have to deal with that. But it's water-based. It's a water-based uh, medium, and so it's like it is watercolor, but it's opaque. And so that means you can paint light over dark. I like it because it's a lot more like oil paint, and I paint in oil a lot. Okay, now I just need to find my brushes. Let's see what I can see out the window. When I paint, I just kind of like start. Uh, I usually do a sketch, but today I'm going to just start working. Let me, let me grab this painting that I started yesterday. Here's this painting that I started yesterday. I'm going to fix this because there's this like kind of funny little red square in the middle, and I don't know how I missed that. But I want to show you a trick that I uh, like to do, especially in this situation where uh, I'm painting for a specific show. I have a, a mat here that's already cut to the size that I need. And so as I'm working, actually, I don't do it so much when I'm working on the painting, but as I get closer to the end, I can pop that on there and see just what it's going to look like and make sure that I've painted out far enough. And it just, it helps me to understand, and it gives you a little preview as to what it's going to look like. But anyway, I'm going to work on this a little bit in a minute. In the meantime... Maybe I'll, I'll work on that while part of this dries a little bit. So we're going to start, and I'm going to uh, start blocking in here and see if you can tell what it is that I'm looking at out my window. So I just like to, I like to block in shapes because that's basically what I'm looking at. You're looking at it sideways, uh, and I apologize for that because my my screen or my camera is the one that's attached to my com computer, and uh, quite honestly, there's not a whole lot of possibilities that I have to change that at the moment. So I'm just working it as we see it, and then I'll turn it sideways, but. feel like we should have music or something when when there's a demo because a lot of times I forget to talk okay so what we have here basically is a garden path there's a little path that's been built out here out the in the there's a little courtyard actually um, my studio is in an old elementary school for those some of you have been here uh, but it's an old elementary school not that old I mean actually well there's been a school on this property since the middle 1800s I guess but the uh, the actual school property the building started here the part that I'm in was like 1954 I think and it's been added on to the part that I there's a there's a courtyard here there's a newer section that's across the hall, across this little courtyard. So I'm kind of looking at that. It's funny to um, look at these things that, that or to actually paint things that you've uh, looked at all the time. You just kind of look at them and you don't really consider what they might look like as a painting. Sorry that this is sideways so much, but 
So it's kind of yellowish in this section. And I'm curious as to what this is going to turn out like, because the way I'm standing here, I can't see the, any sky. And so it's funny. I, I paint really loose. I kind of loose, but I'm at the same time so much of a, a realist. I mean, I base everything about what I'm, what I'm looking at. And, um, I mean, I really don't take too many, too many liberties, even though there's a real abstract nature to, uh, my work, um, I kind of usually stick to what's there in front of me. Um, oh, I'm not really a palette knife painter, but quite honestly, I use the, I, I use the tool a lot and I kind of move stuff around, move paint around, squeegee things back. And I also, I'm going to show you something else that I do is that I will use it as kind of a, oops, I kind of did it backwards. There we go. Use it as a mask to give myself a straight edge. Sometimes I want a straight edge. There we go. I'll show you initially where I'm at at the moment. So we've got this, we've got some grass here, and I've got this building across the, the way. And there's some interesting things happening here, mostly doing with light that I particularly like. Um, great sort of uh, brightness that's coming, a bright yellowy green that is coming across this grass. That's pretty exciting. And so we're going to put that in there. It's this big stripe of brightness. It's just some shadow shapes too, but there's just a big bunch of brightness that is really exciting to see. You know, just hits of bright light. And then there's this path that is kind of, I don't know, I don't want to make it green, but it's kind of, I think I'm going to make it kind of bluish grayish, but it's pretty bright. There we go. Nice grayish sort of color here that um, pathway that they just and somebody installed in the last couple of weeks. But, uh, uh, color is pretty bad in this picture. I'm going to need some more white paint. Let me grab some white. Some of you may actually live locally here in Traverse City. If you do, you should come draw tonight. Just a shameless plug for Royce's figure drawing uh, sessions. Uh, quite honestly, you should come out because won't be that long before I'm taking a break, that extended break because of the trip. And um, and you'll you'll be missing it. You'll miss out. You will be missing. Even if you don't realize it, I'm going to tell you right now that you are going to miss not being able to draw from the figure when when the sessions are stopped for a little while. Okay, so now there's like these, these shadowy shapes that there's a tree out there that's outside the frame that is making these images there. Actually, there's, there's a little bit of a shadow from shadow from the overhang there's this shadowy put a little bit of 
blue in that just to cool it down a little bit. Just kind of comes across. There's trees out there. And that's coming right up to the ground, or right down to the ground. I kind of like to repeat colors. All right. But I think I want to get here some of the brightness of. Um, a little bit more of this brightness of this yellow that's coming across the, the grass here. Okay. okay, I'm going to set this aside for a minute because it really needs to dry. And I'm going to work on that other painting for a second. So hold on, I'll be right back. Don't leave. Actually, uh, put that painting. That, that little demo painting that I'm just doing, put it in front of a fan. So I don't know, you might be able to hear the fan humming now. And uh, we'll bring that back. But one thing I wanted to do, as I mentioned earlier, is this square here that's in the middle. And it's just like so funny to me that it just ended up right there in the middle. And it just needs to be broken a little bit, I think. And so what I'm do just kind of put some of this color that over it. This one here too. It's kind of needs to be broken. Sometimes we just need to break the shape just a little bit. I mean what was there was important because it was part of a window or a vent or some something from uh, this structure that was back there that is almost impossible to see, but um, in the painting, but you know, it was there. And so painting is so good for you. I uh, went out and painted this at my mother's place and uh, I took her some some paint and she was watercoloring. My mother is actually who got me into painting because she um, is an artist and primarily in light, later years here has just been doing watercolors. Here we go. I think that's better. I'm looking at it, oh, much better. Okay, so this right now is in the running maybe to be in that exhibition. We'll see. We'll see. You know, you have to keep, you have to paint lots of paintings when you're getting ready for an exhibition and just to see what's, what will actually make it. But um, so taking the opportunity to go out and paint as much as possible. I might go out and paint again this afternoon. So anyway, that's that. I'm going to go grab that other painting and see if it's dry. Okay, this is still, this is still really wet. But let's see what we can do here. There's some darkness that I really want to get in here around these, these windows. There's some dark bits that I think are really important to what's happening in our composition here. And so um, uh, I, I say, I tell my students this all the time that um, you know, we can we can look at what we're doing, and we can we can paint what we see, and at some point, we have to think about what it is that we need to do that we can just like make this be painting, regardless of of um, what it is, and maybe it's going to be abstract and more abstract than we thought but we need to let the painting talk to us and say what are you what 
are you? And, let, and it will tell us. Your painting will tell you. If you listen, you got to listen. Otherwise, otherwise you just bully through it. And it's not always the best, the best way to go. Okay, I think that there's a little bit of a, there's a little ledge there that I want to put in as a lighter thing. So I started to put this shadowy bit. It's so fun to paint. And we just can learn so much about what we're looking at in the world we live in by painting. So I actually like the building that's quite ugly. I like what I have here better than what nature has provided. Um, let's see. Let's see, I'm going to need to put a little bit of delineation. Maybe some bluish green here by where our building meets the lawn. That's cool. Uh, when you work on watercolor paper, it, I suggest that because it's, um, it's a little sturdier. And when you work with gouache, this is one thing that I really love about it, is that you can, you can move this paint around a lot like I do with oil paint to create texture, I'm going to break up this trail, this path, and kind of have it be a little bit more like stones. There we go. Well, this is kind of cool. I, I love painting because I'm surprised all the time, and I like to let, um, you know, my painting surprise me. A little dark. There's some grassy bits there that are kind of overgrown. I usually use just a simple, a couple simple flat brushes. I very rarely will use um, rounds, except to sign them. If I don't sign it in pencil. Okay, look at this. Let's see. All right, sports fans, I think I'm going to call this for now. Um, I don't know, it needs a little bit of light in the bottom of this building. Kind of want to, it's bricks down here, but I want to uh, bring a little bit of brightness into that because there is there's a quite a bit of brightness where the sun hits it. All right. I will post a picture of this later. Um, I'll hold it up here. It might run a little bit, but anyway, there we go. This is just working in gouache, opaque watercolor, and I have my little garden path here, a little garden with a path, and this 1960s era elementary school wall there. And we're going to see what it looks like here as it dries and as I can uh, see see myself what it's going to look like. It's always kind of fun. I like <clears throat> gouache, how it uh, dries in, in really clean, flat sort of color. So anyway, I want to thank you for... Uh, 
being with me today on uh, TTTV. And I uh, want to thank, uh, let's see, who else? Thank Tolly for being here. Go to artisttableonline.com and see everything that we're doing. It's pretty exciting. We're, Tolly and I are so happy to, uh, and feel so fortunate to be uh, able to do this. It's like uh, really what we love. And, um, and when we can share what we love with uh, everybody and give, give everyone else the opportunity to uh, make some art, it's great because quite honestly, art just may be what uh, saves the planet. So on that note, I'm going to say have a great week. Have a great day. Go make some art and join uh, me and Tolly here next week uh, where we are going to have the sequel to this show, the show Where's Tolly 2. We're going to find out where she's at. Um, it'll be fun to see where she shows up. And then after that, you know, it'll be Tolly and Royce will be broadcasting from Tolly's studio. So lots of exciting stuff, lots of uh, exciting new places. And uh, we want to tell you all about it. So give us a call, email us at any time, and check out our website. And uh, we will see you later. So have a great day. Thanks again. And be well. Make art. See you.